Chris Kelly here. There's our friend Chris Dim right there. Hello? <laughs> you debuting a new character, Loki Kelly? I'm super slumped, man. I'm so slumped right now. I can't even tell you. Slumping hard? I'm slumping so hard. I didn't even finish the introductions. Who's in there today? BB Shane. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Good to be here. I am just so slumped right now. I can't even tell you. I have been just, you know, out late every night. Uh-huh. Um, just partying. <laughs> The pickleball lifestyle, you know how I do. I yeah. mean, my head didn't hit the pillow before nine fifteen last night, and it's just well, it was inevitable that something would have to give, and it's just caught up with me, man. Yeah, it has just caught up with me. Chris Tim just asked a trivia question. We'll probably have it in tough ass trivia in about a month, so you'll get a preview, <laughs> a free preview for it, right? Yeah, now. sometimes we'll do that. Yeah, yeah here it is. Uh, Chris Tim said, "When was the word jaywalking?" Invented. When did it come into the language? Jaywalking. Mm-hmm. Uh, what decade? Correct. And I said the 1790s. <laughs> 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 because I, I think it's because I just saw Hamilton, and I'm really into that. Era. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, oh, But Chris Dim said, "Why would there be a term for jaywalking <laughs> <laughs> in the 1790s?" So there were no motorized vehicles in the 1790s. Yeah. You, you know, you just walk where you wanted to walk, right? In the 1790s. And I said, "Well, why don't you open BB Shea's door and see if he can get it?" Mr. So I did. Yeah, and BB Shea, mm, he put together a couple of things, and he said, "Oh, probably the 1920s." Which is correct. It's exactly correct. Yeah. He stole my answer <laughs> of the 1920s. I was um, working it. You know, yeah. it's like oh, how you uh-huh. start somewhere okay. and then you work it. And so that's what I was doing. So work the problem. Work the problem till you get the mm-hmm. solution. My understanding is, and I, I think I read a little article about it last week. My understanding is, is that in the 1920s, cars became way more affordable mm-hmm. and available. So up until then... You could walk wherever you wanted to walk. The mm-hmm. streets belonged to the people. Mm-hmm. There were carts, yes, uh, and there were street cars, but they were on tracks. You knew where the tracks were. Makes sense, doesn't it? And well, in the 1920s, um, cars were mowing down Americans in the streets. So that's when there people, were no rules. What year? I don't really know this. What year was the car? The Model T was first or yeah. Model A? I think the Model A Model was a. first, but Model T was like the first Took off. major production. You put it on the assembly line. line. That yeah, was the yeah. whole, Ford invented the assembly line, mm-hmm. Henry Ford. So what year did the first car roll? Or what, what year was it invented? Early 1900s or late? Probably. Okay. So then by 1920, the Model they T. They were cheap and available. Okay. And pe- a lot of people are using them. And yeah. so my underst- if the way I read the article is, is that uh, back then, what you and I might call a country bumpkin. Mm-hmm. Or a rube mm-hmm. or a hayseed. Mm-hmm. They call them jaybirds. Yeah. And so they said the automobile industry was kind of behind this. Yes. And they said, look, we're tired of mowing down the American people. <laughs> and rightfully so. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's make it their fault <laughs> yeah. that they're getting killed. So they did. They yeah. invented this term called jaywalking. Jay and they said you only must cross and designated crosswalks. Is that when they first came up with the crosswalk, the 1920s? I yeah. bet. That's what's so Yeah, that's and they, they said, so it. otherwise, mm-hmm. what are you, are you some kind of jaybird? Jay- you don't know how to cross the street. City-educated people know how to cross the street. You're a jaywalker. You're just a jaybird. You're a jaybird, jaywalker, and that's where the term came from. Now, fast forward 100 years, then you now you've got your electric cars you're you're the prius and then remember that when the prius became popular and other hybrid vehicles there were more people getting backed over in uh, pedestrian areas because they're quiet couldn't hear yeah so it's a, yeah so it's a similar thing it's like mm-hmm. it's history repeating itself so we're going to have that question for you in about five weeks when Boom. we play a uh, tough ass trivia that's a good one i have a great saturday night live we were also talking about saturday night live mm-hmm. before the show began i have a fantastic saturday night live question coming up on put up or shut up rock and roll trivia in about three weeks <laughs> so be ready well that one you can't give away no i can't yeah. tell you that and of course you're standing yeah. here too i can't we can't give it but it's a terrific question okay and it's only about three weeks away i'm so slumped we have <laughs> slumped yeah B.B. Shea said this yesterday. Uh, we have a Led Zeppelin prize in Put Up or Shut Up Rock and Roll Trivia every day this week. And I remember last week our promotions director, Matt, took me aside and pinned me against the wall. And he said, whatever you do, make sure there's a Led Zeppelin question in every Put Up or Shut Up Rock and Roll Trivia game this week. And I said, I got it, Matt. 100% right <laughs> on. On. All I've done since is play pickleball. <laughs> and... 
That went in one ear and out the other. So yesterday, after this program, B.B. Shea said, I noticed there wasn't a Led Zeppelin question in today's Put Up or Shut Up. And I said, and? <laughs> so? so what? I said, are you who, talking to me? I said, who are you? <laughs> what kind of pipsqueak youngster are you? Don't tell me my business, boy. <laughs> we know this business. And and uh, B.B. Shea said, well, isn't there supposed to be? And I said, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think there's supposed to be a Led Zeppelin. So he pointed me toward a paper here in front of me that says Led Zeppelin tickets led zeppelin cover tickets every day this week and then in highlighted and circled and in bold with a red star it says make sure there's a led zeppelin question every day this week ouch yeah. so today we have one yeah we have one and okay. tomorrow we're scrambling tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> we huh. are yeah. trying to put it together okay and throwback thursday is going to be an issue as well let me just say <laughs> that okay yeah we've got some just logistically with- logistically there are issues and i hate it when i'm hit upside you know when they get to me last minute like this i mean he only talked to me about this about 10 days ago so this is uh, lead time would be nice i can't yeah please (laughs) then he gallivants off to disney world yeah he's down disney world he is not yeah 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 he is but uh Matt, our promotions man, is down in Disney, and he said they chose this week because there's now no masks. There's no Disney is ah hundred percent wide open. Yeah, but you know, I just saw yesterday that Philadelphia went back to masking, and we talked right. about it a bit yesterday. That's just oh, man, I'm slumped. I'm super slumped when I hear something like that. I just, oh no, please don't let it come again. You know, mm. I just cannot put another covering over my mouth and face again. <laughs> I just cannot. I feel like I can't do it anymore. You know. So anyway. I'm slumped. That's how we start this. That's why I'm okay. low-key. That's why I'm so low-key today. Do you need a Diet Coke? I had one. I had one. Today was my day off of them. My right. first day off. But yeah. I said, you know, I think I'll wait to quit those the day Biggie comes back. If you haven't heard this, Biggie's my best friend. And <laughs> I spearheaded an operation to get him healthy. I called it Get Biggie Healthy. Okay. <laughs> And by spearheading, what I mean is I said, yeah, go ahead and do it. (laughs) You were told about it later. I was told later and said, good idea. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Biggie has taken some time off several weeks. He is going, he is really getting himself together. I think he's uh, with his family right now. And then he's going, he told us last week, he's going to go check into a facility to try to get his health together, his weight, all the things, eating right, psychology, exercise, all of those things. So when he comes back. I'm going to start oh, okay. with him. That's what I'm going to do. And um, I'll say this to my wife for my birthday yesterday. She gave me exactly what I love. Big old family size things of uh, plain M&Ms, which I've eaten half of today already. <laughs> Big family size things of double stuffed Oreos mm. and some uh, Hershey bars. And I was like, keep it coming. Dang. Tonight. Just did, keep it coming. Did yeah. you get your cake that you wanted to? Yeah, I got all that. I got cupcakes. That I, uh, I got all of that. I got gourmet everything. cupcake? From the place I like. Yeah. <laughs> I said, it's my birthday. We're going to the place. We're Did you going. get any? Uh, mm-hmm. Yep. A gentleman doesn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Could I ask? A gentleman doesn't kiss and tell. We've made it. We've negotiated that. Uh, we have an, an, a milestone anniversary coming up in the summer. So I said, all right, I'll take two then. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> she said, Smart man. She said, I can't yeah. do it for the birthday. I said, all right. Someone's going to develop a mouth sore the week before a watch. <laughs> Just a little back and forth. Yeah. yeah. That's how it, that's, that's what healthy couples mm, do. Yeah. You negotiate. Well, what do you give in a negotiation? Well, you know, whatever she wants, I'll give. Mostly she wants to be left alone. Is, right. From what I've seen. It's like, go and, and leave me to read my book I on the I couldn't help but think as I was brushing my teeth this morning, knowing that it was, you know, uh, for years, you've claimed you've got money for your birthday. Mm-hmm. No one gives an adult man ber- birthday I, money. I get birthday money from my wife and my brother-in-law. <laughs> and I wondered, is this the year, Kelly, that you finally converted your slush fund into crypto? <laughs> <laughs> it really should be. Your should birthday be. crypto cash? Oh, my God. I'm Listen, and I'm seeing my money man tomorrow. Yeah? I've got an appointment with my money man tomorrow. And they're saying that the inflation numbers are coming out today. And look for the stock market to just just go way down because inflation is going to be off the chart today. Well, this is saying. time for the simple minded to panic. I'm panicked. <laughs> I'm pan. I'm I'm doing two things today. I'm slumping and I'm panicking. And I'm that's a challenge. I'm going into my money man's office tomorrow and I'm saying sell, 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 sell. <laughs> I you know I I just want I'm like it's a run on the bank as of today and tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Because these inflation numbers are going to be very, very bad from what I hear. Nah, 
Good news. Most people don't pay attention don't to you. Care. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's not like a you don't take advice thing. from you. You're supposed to. You're in the 401k program, BB Show. Yeah. 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 Keep your eye on it. <laughs> keep your eye on it, but don't panic. I don't know how to do that. The panic? No, just <laughs> I don't know how to keep up with it. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> well, I watch the Dow and I watch okay. the NASDAQ. So I'll let you know. We used to do a thing here called the opening bell where every day I would say what happened. Mm-hmm. At right, you know, it, oh, the stock market opens at 9.30 in the morning Eastern. And so every day at 9.30 Eastern, I would say, here's how it opened. And we went through a tough period economically, and I got so slumped. Finally, the boss said, cut that. Cut that, that piece <laughs> is done. <laughs> we don't want to do that anymore. You know, <laughs> Replace it with something else. I uh, we called it the closing bell. We did a closing bell at we at, dumped four, it in the afternoon. at four thirty every day. <laughs> we said, "Dump it on Dave in the afternoon. He can do the closing bell, which is exactly what he did." And uh, that left with little fanfare. It did. Too. That went away as well. Here's something. This is radio related as well. We met a couple of guys. One of the team a few years ago, Kristen and I were invited to be guest panelists in a, sh- in a uh, convention in Chicago. Now, Golly, was that ten years ago? About eleven. Uh, I think it was less than that. I think it was. Yeah. I think it was more like seven or eight years ago. But my mind, I'm, mm. I don't know. Anyway, we were there. We paneled. Um, <laughs> pretty big deal in the industry. <laughs> right. We had a. Uh, there was a discussion. There were, you know, two hundred radio guys in the audience. We had a s- session on promotion or something. I don't even remember what our. Topic, I don't either. What our topic was. They put us up there to panel. Yeah, and. I froze. I didn't say a word. The spotlight <laughs> came on, and a couple of other guys were up there, and Chris Dib, and they worked their magic and spoke and got laughs. And when the spotlight went on me, I completely froze. And they actually <laughs> asked me some questions, and the sweat <laughs> that was pouring off me, my armpits <laughs> were like somebody had taken water buckets and yeah. thrown under there. And they said, like, what's your name? And I said, oh, uh, uh, same as his. You know, that that kind of thing. That's I, how we started. Hundred, I mean, as awful as you can possibly be. I've been to two conventions. At one, I was called a racist and run out of town. <laughs> that was an emergency convention. That was an emergency convention. <laughs> At the other, I completely froze yeah. when I was paneling in Chicago. Yeah. The first was in Washington. And we went up after uh, Janet Jackson's Nipplegate. Just when, a few <laughs> weeks after. A few weeks after, the FCC said, we're going to start cracking down on what radio and TV stations do. So I said, let's march to Washington and give our take on this. And so <laughs> I've got a few things I'd like to say. <laughs> so we're there. It's me, Chris Dibb, and our general manager. And we're sitting there in the audience. And a bunch of people are up speaking, including the chairman of the FCC. This was a big-time panel. Big deal. In Washington, D.C., okay? And you have people on the side of, like, let's give more freedom to radio and TV stations. In the wake of Janet Jackson's boo being exposed at the Super Bowl. So we're about a month after that, and they have this emergency meeting. And so we're there, and there's a lonely microphone at the front. And one guy from the parents' Radio Council, Radio and TV Council. He's very, very conservative. Brent Bozell? Brent Bozell. Mm. Went up and gave a whole speech about how we shouldn't say this and He's we shouldn't say polished. that. He's polished. He was a national figure at that time. Tremendous. I mean, tremendous. So I turned to the general manager and I said, I've got a point to make. Well, he put his hand on my knee and said, no. <laughs> Please, God, don't. <laughs> don't you dare. And I said, okay. And they went on and on, and this Brent Bozell, who's unbelievably polished, kept on talking about it. was it. a future senator up on the panel. The Brownback, Brown. right? Sam Brownback from Kansas. Kansas. Who was a re- representative at the time, but now a congressional representative. Correct. Future ha- senator. House. Now he's Senate. And the chairman of the FCC. Correct. All on the panel, on the dais, all right, and Brent Bozell. And it's right before lunch. And so I say that finally I get worked up. I say to the general manager, I'm going up there. He says, no, don't you. I said, I'm doing Somebody it. has to stand up for this industry. I said, somebody <laughs> That's to stand. Let somebody else be somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> I march my way to the microphone. I wait in line. I get up there. They put my face on two enormous screens. The, the room was dark, okay. and All they right. had a spotlight 
right. BB Shea on the microphone. So, uh, I mean, this was like super professional. It was. And you, Unbelievable. So I could see myself, you know, huge on uh, two different huge screens. Sweating like Richard Nixon in the debates. I mean, You're heavier. You're carrying some weight. Seventy-five pounds heavier than I am right now. Okay, and I was where I was squeezed into a suit I wore to my prom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my uh, tie was loosened. You know, my shaving. I had shaved that morning, but it looked like I had a five o'clock shadow already. Mm-hmm. I mean, I look, could not have looked worse. All my chins were out. I was shoved into this thing. I barely breathed. So this Brent Bozell, who's the head of the parental television radio council very conservative i say to him something like well, what about what the grease man says <laughs> all right grease man is a radio a legend legend in radio but he said so many off-color thing i mean so many things that that was what he was known for. used to get away with and got suspended and this and that and that brent bozell looked at me and said so you're a racist <laughs> and the whole crowd went yeah he's a racist <laughs> He's a racist. His mouth agape across right. the massive screen. And I just opened my mouth. Well, they turned the mic off. Like I'm not a racist, but nobody could hear me. And the MC said, "We'll break for lunch." That's lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so it gets worse. We go to lunch. I go through the line. I get my stuff. And at every steaks, uh, steaks at every table, seats taken. <laughs> <laughs> We're not eating with the racist. We would get up and move. So I have to sit down at a lone table. Even the general manager and Chris Dim say, we can't sit. Yeah. Please go somewhere else. So I just go off in the corner and sit by myself. What an awful experience. And that was probably the second worst conventional experience I had. The point is, in Chicago a few years later, these guys named Dwyer and Michaels were there. And they've just been... One guy was there. His name was Greg Dwyer, and he has just been also legends, legendary, legendary radio guys, and they have just been inducted. I read this morning on my radio board into the Illinois State University Broadcast Hall of Fame. That's fantastic. Wait now, a minute. their show is in Iowa. They're based out of Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> so. I saw this and said they're already in the aisle. They're, 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 I guess so. Oh, now they're in Illinois, and I said to Chris Dim, maybe there's, a, there's hope for us in like Tennessee, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> or, or you know Montana, yeah, <laughs> West is there, Virginia. Is there somewhere we could go, you know, and be in some yeah. Hall of Fame? Because on these years where we go to our own uh, broadcast excellence conventions, and other people are put into the Hall of Fame. I always think to myself, one day, one day we'll Why be them. And Chris Dim always says, don't even get your... No. Don't begin writing a speech. <laughs> <laughs> don't prepare remarks. I think it was the racist thing. Throw away the prom I suit. Kept... <laughs> <laughs> I still have it. I still have that prom suit that I could... And maybe now I could squeeze back into it. You, you know, might... I had ga- I had really ballooned up. Really, when I was on that, at that, in front of that microphone, and looked up at my sweaty, porky self, I thought... And you weren't prepared Jeez. for it. No, totally unprepared. Yeah. I mean, off it catches the, you off guard. So stupid. I know. That's right. You see yourself and you're just like, God, do I really look that fat? Am I mm-hmm. really that bad? You know, when you look at yourself. When, when you see how people see you, oh, it's God. Isn't it alarming. alarming. It is alarming. <laughs> when you hear yourself, too. When you hear yourself and see mm-hmm. yourself, I just think, God, is that right? Because, you know, I always play myself when we go through drive through windows. I play this show so that the yes. so that the person working can hear me and in hopes that they'll go hey wait a minute are, yeah. who's, who's are, that are whose you? voice is that <laughs> here's free chicken sandwiches forever exactly yeah that's what you're hoping for yeah. but it hasn't worked so far but i hear myself i'm like oh my god that is not even close to mm-hmm. what i was not even close to what i was hoping for you know um and i think see it, this is the type of thing that won't get us into the broadcast hall of fame later this hour i have a fascinating story on kmart <laughs> Oh yeah. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Fast. Yeah. I've prepared it. Yeah. I've, I said to BB Shane, "We're gonna we're gonna get this Kmart story from every mm. angle." And five minutes ago, or right before five minutes before we come on air, the local news does the story. They say news from Kmart today, and Chris Tim goes non-story. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know, man. I didn't know. Worthless. Yeah. <laughs> Worthless. I didn't know you'd blocked off time. I blocked off. <laughs> yeah. I blocked off. A uh, block three. Uh, block three. Hour one. Block three. I was like, let's for do Kmart. For Kmart. Yeah. <laughs> this is a big deal. <laughs> Retail segment. Breaking news. Retail yeah. segment. Breaking news. Been breaking for yeah. about yeah. forty years. <laughs> 